Mike Bowen, this is Ben Brown. We are 66% of AP Transmission's GIS department. Uh, <laughs> this is the area we cover. It's We work in 13 states and we have 40,000 miles of transmission lines. So that's, a, that's quite a bit to, to cover. If you were here last year or if you were at EGA last year, I talked a lot about how we're using RGS Online and um, basically how we're, how we're leveraging that. Today we'd like to talk kind of how we're continuing with RGS Online, some of the things we're seeing in the future. And then Ben's gonna talk about how we're leveraging Portal. So we're starting to install Portal and getting going with that so we can bring some stuff from RGS Online down to the high level firewall. Um, so this kind of complicated little thing here is basically when we have something come out of planning, it's at a super project level. So they call it one project, but then engineers and things, they start breaking that down to several other projects. So, for example, the super project comes in here. As soon as they add, a plan on adds a project ID in our PeopleSoft software, it's immediately available visually to the GIS department. So, we see it, we can start to create these maps, these applications for the project in the future. So, they're already set up. So, when they did the project kickoff meeting, um, when they go out in the field for site visits, things like that, it'll look at the project, it's already ready to go. Then we take that data, and because of how we just filled in with the filtering, um, it, it allows us to build that and then use templates and filtering to get that down to the project level. People edit the data, and then it goes right back up to the super project level, and then eventually to the, um, the AP, the visual of what AP has going on in production right now. Our, our plan is to keep the super project and projects on the on RGS online, and the reason for that is we have a lot of consultants and things just like everyone else. So we have to work with them. They have, to have that easy access to our data, and then also you know things like storm events and things like that will also probably um, make that available on RGS online just so we can it's scalable and we can put that out to um, people that may not work for AP. And then sorry about that. And then. Uh, Portal will carry, you know, once those are, the super projects are merged together and, and brought up, then that will all be brought down to Portal, and then we'll be serving that to our internal people, so our project managers, um, anyone that's making decisions on a system level, will be able to see that. And then eventually that gets pushed up and we put that with our existing TGIS, which is our system of record, basically. That's what we have built, that's what we pay taxes on, that type of thing, and then they get a full system view of what we have. Um, at the project level, we have so many different applications and things going on that tools that these people or you know that users can use. Uh, we got a lot of questions of yeah, you got all these tools. This is nice, but I don't know where to get to all these maps and, and how to do this stuff. So we used the story map and basically built a toolkit for them. So it has all the different applications that they can use. And it's right there, built into the story map. Um, they just click on the tabs, and then on the tabs they can click and open up the full application if they want to. If they don't want to. You know, they figure out what they need and they want to open up the full thing and get the full screen real estate they can. We also build in, we have SharePoint sites for these projects. They're built right here so people don't have to log into SharePoint and go to a different place to get that. Um, our outreach team creates a project web page for, you know, for the public. We put that right there so you can get information about the project if someone calls in. It's all available right there. So, Bill actually asked earlier about how many applications um, we built in the past year. And we're actually up this past year we did let's see what we got here. Uh, 203 applications and from 344 maps, which is quite a bit for three people. Uh, and, that, and that number's just grown quite a bit. So as soon as we get this project level off the ground, it's going <coughs> to expand quite a bit. That'd be good. That would only take 18 seconds to build uh, <laughs> the app. The, so that, that project level, that whole toolkit, we got it down to where you can. You can make that whole toolkit when it comes out of planning in about eight hours. So based on templates and queries and filters and things like that, um, we can bust that out in eight hours, and I think we can get it even less than that. So I'm hoping to get it down to maybe four hours if possible. But with that, I'm gonna give it up to Ben so we can talk about Portal. So, so like Mike said, we're, we're actually currently in, in the process of uh, putting out on-premise de deployment. And uh, so we're, we're I mean, it's really in the early stages. We, we've gone through our development servers and we're in our test servers now, and we've got you know, Q&A to go before we hit production. Uh, we're using a combination of Linux and Windows servers. Um, we've got two nodes each of ArcGIS server and two nodes of, uh, of Portal. 
in our, in our deployment going forward. And once we hit Q&A, we'll do performance testing to see if that's going to support our organization at, at the level we need it. Um, we're, we've run into some issues so far doing this. Uh, web adapter is not working. I uh, don't know the exact issues with that. You know, if you got questions on that, I can definitely talk to the, the one of the IT guys that's, that's on the project. Um, so we're having to use load balancers, um, external load balancers for that issue. And our, our cluster failover, so if one node goes down, it takes a while for the other one to kind of take over. So we're trying to work through those issues. Um, another one is where we can create feature layers on the first node in portal, but we can't go to the second node and create feature layers with HTTPS turned on. So we're trying to figure out what the issue is there. And uh, just to know that we've got, we've got tons of issues. I just selected a few. Uh, issue setting up a data store on the second RGIS cluster. Um, the, the first, the first uh, portal only reads the first cluster on the first node. And we're not, we're not being, able, being able to set up the second data store and read it. So we're, we're trying to work through that. I don't know if any of you guys have, have run into the, any of these issues trying to set up portal and get solutions. Or if you got more questions about it, I can definitely find you an answer. Um, finally, one of the things we're working on in, a, in, in our Agile team is we are, are using Web App Builder and Portal to develop a, a, a step in our automation from PLS CAD to our GIS system. And one of the things in that step is uh, this, our map, it's called uh, our manual attribution client. It's the fill in. So we go from PLS CAD to uh, GIS. It automates a lot of our drawing and attributing, but there's gaps that we can fill in manually. And so we're building this client to make it more intuitive for the editor so we can standardize our process because it's so different across a uh, lot of three offices. So hopefully this will this will work really well once it's complete. And this is really early. I mean, this is what they've developed in this past week. Um, just trying to get all of our layers pulled in in this uh, attribute grid at the bottom. We can select the uh, like the structure layer, select the structure in that data grid, and it'll select the related tables and stuff to go along with it, like the poles and stuff. Um, and that's that's all for that, the internal stuff. You guys have any questions? Let me put a question slide in there. We got a content in there. How, how is uh, PLS CAD folks, I mean, are they working with you on this, or? We, we've had some discussions with them. Um, they didn't really give us a whole lot of stuff we didn't already know. We got some SMEs inside. Um, AP that has provided a lot of information, a lot of help, and really we're just exporting out an XML file straight out of PLS CAD from the project and reading the data from there using you know, the interop tool and importing it right in. Right in. Are they excited? Yeah. Uh, PLS CAD. <laughs> um, I don't know. We haven't gone back to them yet. <laughs> Probably more the designers. But yeah. The, yeah, the designers are, are definitely excited. But everyone decided to get it all into GGS. Yeah. Reasonable amount of time instead of a couple years. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's a huge time saving too. It's a big, big problem. Yeah, at, at some of the earlier transmission sinks, uh, a lot of the folks have said, hey, help us out uh, with the, uh, not so much integration, but getting the data in and out of PLS CAD and having it really be a, a meaningful workflow. So, whatever you can do, maybe uh, you said this is only a week or so old, but. This, yeah, this part of it. So, sorry. We, we have a process, we've got workflow set up that goes through and does the PLS CAD conversion. We've drawn it in. So if you look at this map on that, on that slide, so what it does is this step opens up the portal application and, and filters out every other uh, line, structure, span, so on and so forth. And just shows the stuff related to that project, zooms into it and allows you to select and identify and things like that for that project. So this piece of it, this piece of this project uh, is, is about two weeks old. Everything else, we're already able to just draw and attribute this this project and get 60 to 70% of all the attributes we need for, for compliance reporting. And it, we're estimating it's gonna save us, um, well, it's gonna be about a 400% increase in time savings so far, trying to get it from PLS CAD to our GIS system. So it's gonna be huge. Right, that, that's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. How many people use PLS CAD? Yeah, almost everybody. Yeah. I think but we have one more question. Do you have some? Oh, okay. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we have one more uh, 